So Sean, a common question we've been getting a lot of recently is what is social housing and how can you get into social housing? Great question. So social housing is a fantastic strategy. It's when you work directly with the government and you house a vulnerable service user. So you can get into it various ways, either working directly with the government and becoming a social housing provider. Um, but have to make you aware with this, it's one of them strategies where you have to be passionate about it. There's, there's so many different avenues of social housing. You've got supported accommodation, you've got temporary accommodation, you've got supported living. And within these sectors, you've then got like lots of different subdivisions. Okay. Uh, so you could get into it that way by working directly with the government and bidding on a tender essentially to, to win the bid and provide the service. Or the other option, which a lot of our mentees do, is by working with social housing providers and becoming a partner and essentially becoming the middleman. So what the way this strategy works, you're not actually providing the daily support or the daily operations of the business. Essentially, what you're doing is, is working on the housing side. Mm -hmm. um, so it's great for property investors because you already know the housing side already, but you don't necessarily know the support side. Yeah. I really do it together and it works well as, as, a, as a partnership. Sean, you know why I love social housing? Yeah, because for me, what I do is I, um, as you know, some people might not know that are watching, but what I do is I'll buy a property, I'll get it to the social housing HMO standard, and yeah. I'll basically give it over to the social housing provider. Now, the reason I love doing this strategy is because they cover all the bills, yeah. all the maintenance of the property. Uh, they typically give us a long lease for like five to seven years, and it's government backed as well. So it's pretty safe. Um, whereas with the normal HMOs, you know, as you know, Sean, you get a lot of headaches. You know, you have people moving <laughs> out, moving in, void periods. So for me, what it means is that my monthly profit is significantly higher if I rent it to a social housing provider most of the time. Most yeah. of the time. I think the game changer for, from a landlord's point of view, or even just doing it on a rent to rent basis and being, being the middleman, is that, yeah, you've got no bills, no operations. And also, it's actually as well, I would say from um an investment point of view it's very financially secure because you're dealing with government backed contracts so as long as a social housing provider um that's the only thing i would say as long as they're they're like a proper company and they they do things ethical ethically and they actually are providing the um the service it's very hard for a um a supporting um a social housing company to, to fail yeah. in that sense um so as long as they're doing their job correct which i'd highly recommend you doing the due diligence beforehand um then you're good to go really and what is it specifically how have you structured your business because i know you are a social housing provider yeah you know, your company you do actually provide the social housing so yeah. what's the difference between what you do to working with a provider yeah, fantastic. So the difference with myself is I work directly with the government. So the way it works is we fund the houses, um, we fund the tenants, we so we build relationships with um, lots of different organisations like Homeless Shelters, Salvation Army, things like that. They build a, a referral database because I realised that to build this business and especially to, you know, with the amount of rooms we have now, I realised that we got, we've got to get really good at building referrals and more importantly, building relationships with these organizations who can pass us referrals. Yeah. Um, so essentially that's what we do. We find the properties, we onboard the properties onto the hostel database um, so that we can run it as supported accommodation. And then from there, we then find the tenants, we then support our ten tenants. And then the service user, they actually go for a tailor-made support program um to ensure that we, we're meeting their needs and the, the whole the, the, the whole purpose and aim is to get them from being homeless mm -hmm. on the streets some of them are you know their mental health is in a very you know dark place we get them back into a uh, into a nice safe secure home environment where they get the, the support they become a part of the family essentially um and then they work for our tailor-made support program, work on their mindset, work on their skills, um, and then get them back contributing again into society. So it's the way we say it, this is like a stepping stone in the right direction. Um, and I think it's very important as well because a lot of the service users, some of them feel like, ah, I feel like I'm going backwards. I feel like a failure, for instance, because I'm in supported accommodation. I'm in a hostel, essentially. I'm saying, no, this is actually a stepping stone in the right direction. But changing their mindset and getting them to, to think differently. No, I love that. Yeah. How can people, um, for example, use the rent to rent strategy and incorporate it with the social housing strategy? 
Oh, great question. So what I would highly recommend firstly is understanding the way it works, getting your foot into the door. So what I'll do is find a social housing provider, someone that you resonate with, someone that you feel like, you know what, in the future, I could maybe do this strategy myself and find that a way that you can be of value to them. So what you, what you tend to find, um, a lot of the social housing providers that don't really understand, especially the rent to rent strategy, they don't really understand how to acquire the properties, don't have that skill set. So as you as the property investor or the like the the person who's who understands how to find rent to rent deals and do rent to rent deals quickly, you can be of massive value to a lot of these social housing providers. So it's all about how understanding how you position yourself to be of value to them and say, look, I'm a property investor in the local area. I'm looking to expand. I'm looking to partner with social housing deals. I don't understand the social housing industry. However, I do understand how to acquire deals and how to expand a property portfolio. So is there a way that we can work together in any way? Now, the three things you want to find out is number one, what do they pay? That's really important because once you know what they pay, what's the what's the the room rate, for instance, what they're paying per room per month, then you can sort of work it backwards from there. Um, what area do they operate in as well? And mm-hmm. number two, what type of properties are they looking for? Are they looking for blocks? Are they looking for HMOs? Are they looking for apartments? Once you've got them three core questions answered, essentially you're good to go from that point and you can then go out there, find the, find the property, secure the property on your lease first. Mm-hmm. But in fact, there's two ways that you can that you can actually negotiate this. Number one, once you know exactly what they're looking for, you can become their almost personalised property shopper. Mm. Uh, almost like a property sourcer, essentially, where you go out there and you say, look, okay, cool, we'll find this for you and we'll charge you a set fee. Mm. However, I wouldn't recommend doing that. If it's, a, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a short-term way of thinking. Ideally, what you want to create is passive income. And we've got mm. mentees doing this, like earning you know £10,000 plus per month now. And basically, you secure the lease with the landlord because at this point, you know their rates, you know what they're going to pay you. Yeah. So you look it backwards, you secure the rate with the landlord directly, you build that relationship, you sign the lease. And essentially, what you're then going to do then is you sign another lease with the social housing company. So you become the middleman mm-hmm. and you've got no overheads, no operations, no bills. It's yeah. obviously a game changing strategy. <clears throat> and it's a way for you to build a great business. And it and earns passive income. I just love the fact that you can do the BRR strategy and you can do rent to rent strategy and incorporate yeah. you know, the social housing aspect because it's such a game changer. The fact that they do cover the bills just means it's significantly more profitable. You know, yeah. um, obviously, if you're buying a property in a really high end area where you can get, say, £700 a room, um, then, you know, it might not always be as profitable. Um, but typically, typically it is. So it is definitely a really good strategy. I do love it. Mm. Um, there's so many different housing providers as well. Um, we actually have a list, don't we, of all the UK social housing providers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game changer. It's just a case of calling them, position yourself correctly. Yeah. Position yourself as an expert because yeah. essentially if, you, if you're coming to them and they think you're going to be, they think you're going to be a liability or hindrance. You know what I mean? They're not going to want to work with you, but if you position yourself, like, you know, you find out what's their, what's their pain points, essentially, what are they struggling with property wise? And you become, that's the solution to their problem. There's no reason why they wouldn't want to work with you. And I think one, one good thing we've been doing with all of our mentees, because obviously we do run a training program and a mentorship program. Um, So we work with a small group of students to help them to start scale up and build their property portfolio, incorporating these strategies as well. So we actually provide them, don't we, with the contracts, um, also the full list of providers in the UK. Mm. Uh, just teach people how to actually partner with social housing providers. Um, so it's a step-by-step program that we do. But yeah, so Sean, what tips would you say for someone that wants to get started in social housing, but they're finding it a bit confusing, they want to start their own, social housing business yeah or what, what would you say regarding that honestly i would say get educated find someone who that you resonate with uh, you know like this, this is a perfect plug for us because we obviously run a, a um we, we obviously teach this stuff but even if you don't go with us you know what i mean we want you to go with someone who you resonate with because when you're dealing with vulnerable people it is a minefield and actually there's not there's not many people 
in the UK that are actually teaching this strategy yeah. um, because there's so many different elements of it. And it's like sometimes where do you start? So essentially what we do is we we map out the game plan for you. We understand, we help you to sort of um, figure out what sort of, what sort of direction you want to go in in social housing we'll say okay cool this is the direction you need to go in let's connect you with the right people let's let's get you um your first deal essentially mm-hmm. so Very i would cool. say so so the, in, in short the the question the answer to your question is just get educated find a mentor and just copy the formula if not honestly it's going to be a minefield what would you say to the people that want to start their own social housing business I would say firstly is figure out a look at a look at a problem. So the way I started social housing is 2020, homelessness was our all-time high. And I, at this time I didn't actually know social housing was even a thing. I just thought I didn't I didn't know what it was. I, I've heard people doing it, but I didn't have a clue of how I was going to get into it. And the way I got into it was like by, by curiosity essentially. So understanding that the office phones are ringing off the hook. Mm. and people wanted to get you know people wanted housing but i was like cool i've got a limited company i can't house these people because essentially they haven't got a job they haven't got an income an active income coming in so i always started to call the council and say you know what can i do to help mm. how can i help how can i be of, of, of value to you and um i spoke to the right person right time and essentially that was my my foot in the door in terms of doing that so i would say you need to f- figure out which sort of method you, they, that you want to go in because for instance social housing you've got you've obviously got homelessness that's mm-hmm. what that's why that's what i do you've got temporary accommodation mm-hmm. then you've got the more complex like supported living you've got mother and baby um you've got 16 to 18 year olds as well um and and again with that they've got different sort of needs different levels as well depending on like their mental health Mm, And I'll be saying to people as well, like from my perspective anyway, I'd be saying, you know, it's much less stressed. It's much less stressful if you actually partner with a social housing provider rather than trying to become one yourself. Um, It's much more easier to do. And because there's so many different social housing providers that are already set up, you know, um, they've already got everything set up ready to go so if you partner with um, a social housing provider that is much easier to do um, and that's what we kind of recommend for our students and mentees 100 percent. it's like a stepping stone in the right direction if i was starting from scratch now because mm. honestly i've done it the hard way i was yeah. quite lucky at the time because um it was covid homelessness was at all-time high so the council was in a very desperate place to the point where they had hotels like travel lodge and if you remember travel lodge was like they mm. they, they all they was doing is housing homeless yeah helping the council out so the council was desperate at the time but looking back now i made when i first started i made a lot of mistakes because there was there isn't really no help out there Mm -hmm. the council they don't have the capacity and the infrastructure and the resources to be able to teach you how to do these things yeah there's no there's no there's no sort of framework um Mm -hmm. they expect you to to have to already have to come to them with the framework and what kind of things say to someone that's saying to you and myself you know, I want to start my own social house. I want to become a provider. Yeah. Just to give people a bit of context, the amount of things that they have, you would have to do in order to become a provider yourself. Yeah. It's extremely difficult, guys. And yeah. I'm not one to say something is impossible. Okay. I would never say that to anybody. It is possible. However, I do think partnering with them is the, the better way of doing it. Um, mm-hmm. What kind of things do they ask you to, to um, have in place to become a social housing provider yourself? And so it's that's quite a difficult question to answer just because it depends on the level. So for instance, with the homelessness, they just want to see like a proven track record of success. We've been, have you got experience in terms of, you know, working with people with mental health? Have you got any qualifications in, in health and social care as well? Um, now, the other thing as well, if you want to go high level, sometimes mm-hmm. you might need, depending on what you want to do, you might need to be CQC registered. You might need to, which is a very, you know, rigorous um um period of, of testing essentially that that whole process could take years mm. because they design all your policies from scratch um they all need to make sense and then you want to get approved then you get an interview then you need to have you know a level i think it's a level four level five um registered manager mm. um, and then you've got ofsted as well so again it depends on what sort of regulatory body um depending on what you do depend what sort of regulatory body that you, that you go with yeah once you find someone, 
that you like and a company that that, that you want to go ahead with to company that you, that you want to sort of replicate and do something similar mm-hmm. as i said just like partner with them see how you work work together be of a be of value to them and mm-hmm. then you'll understand the operations and what's involved before you get into it yeah because, um what people don't understand with social housing yeah it is a you know it is a well paid lucrative business from a business point of view. However, the responsibility and accountability aspect of it is extremely high as well. Mm-hmm. When you're working with vulnerable people, the council want to ensure that you know what are you actually doing your job? Are you actually giving them the support that they need? Mm-hmm. Um, are you are you going above and beyond? They want you to go above and beyond. They don't want to just do the the bare minimum. Yeah. And ultimately, if something if something happens to that service user. Um, like, you know, for instance, they take their own life while they're in your care. Mm. The, the, the council is going to be on your back so hard to like mm. say, okay, cool, let's see, let's say that tenant's going to be the last 12 months. This is the last 12 months of support that you provided. And yeah. if you seem to be negligent, mm. consequences of that is, is very high. So yes, yeah. there's a lot of stake, basically. So you've got to understand the risks, the responsibility and the accountability as well. Yeah, and I'd say on top of that, when you do partner with a provider, you know, as long as you have the property, it's compliant. You have all your ducks in a row, I'd say. You know, you have your property certificates and the property is to their standard, then they'll take it on. You know, they deal with those kind of headaches and, you know, you can get really, really good rates with them. Yeah. And it's passive and you've got no maintenance. And also the thing is as well, you know, we like if you was doing like working professionals, mm-hmm. if they lose their job, they come to financial difficulty, which happens, you know, quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, then all of a sudden that profit margin that, that you thought you had that thousand pounds then becomes, if you, you know, you take off 450 or from that, it, it becomes like nearly half. Exactly. Straight away, just from, just from one telling not paying you. Whereas with this, yeah. it's government backed, they're going to pay you every month. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's actually much less risky as well, like as a, as a long-term um, investment plan. Yeah. So if we look at the two deals there, the working professional HMO was coming in at 1080 uh, per month net profit. This one is coming at 1930, 1930 pounds per month. So that's nearly double the profit margin on a social housing HMO versus a working professional HMO. Now this social housing HMO is one where you've partnered with a social housing provider and they've taken on the property for seven years seven years you know how much you're going to get um so it's a massive difference guys now this is just an example deal but these are realistic figures we're giving out right here um myself i work with two different social housing providers um soon it might be three because i'm speaking with another provider at the moment and guys i just want to say social housing is where it's at it honestly is and you know we've got no agenda by by saying this it just works and it yeah. works better. So that's why we're doing it. I would not be doing it if it didn't work out better for me. 100%. <laughs> so Sean, closing message. What have you got to tell people in regards to social housing? Anything we've missed off? Anything you wanted to, to share? No, guys. I just feel like, you know, it's, as I said, the numbers speak for themselves. The security speaks for itself. The purpose speaks for itself as well. Yeah. Because one of the things that we haven't mentioned in all this, especially when you're partnering, whether you're doing it yourself or even if you're partnering with, with a social housing provider, you're helping those who need it most. Mm. That's that's one good thing. So it's like, you know, the impact that you get to make, the impact that you get to be involved in is huge. Honestly, the lives that we change on a daily basis, mm. people on the verge of committing suicide, coming to our properties, changing their life around, it's back into, back into society, back contributing, you know, got a job, happily ever after do you know what i mean so it's like it's it's so nice to be involved in that and you can you can be a part of that as well so you know in terms of a purpose because in you know all my businesses it's all about helping people i'm very much into helping people and i feel like if helping people is at the forefront of your mind and that's your biggest agenda and your main agenda everything else is going to come by default the money will come by default because you're helping people and you you, you'll get compensated Mm. as a reward for that Definitely. And a lot of the HMOs I do when I'm partnering with social housing providers, there's two tenant types on the the, the providers I work with. First tenant type is um, young people that have just came out of care. So that's the one tenant type. And the second tenant type is refugees. Um, So people, you know, 
refugees basically so i feel like I'm definitely doing a good thing i'm enjoying it i like the feeling of providing a nice accommodation because we don't just go super low spec you know that is not what this strategy is about you know you still want to make it very nice for the tenants that live there um, so yeah guys um just one thing to note as well if you did want to inquire about working with myself and sean have us as your mentors um we are very open to it all you need to do is click on the link in the description keep in mind guys it is very limited spaces because we want to make sure that we're not working with too many people guys okay so it's very limited spaces if you click that link fill out a quick form and then my, you can literally book a call uh, with myself and sean and guys my biggest tip will be whoever you work with if you do get a property mentor someone to teach you the strategy that you want to implement make sure whoever you go with is really doing what they say okay because lots of people online that are talking about stuff that they don't actually do themselves we're really doing this guys so just um work with people that are really doing it yeah man love that yeah all right guys stay tuned like comment subscribe see you all very soon